Wherapy. Therapy wherever, whenever. So, welcome to the second part of the podcast. In the first part of the podcast, we uh, took a look at what OCD is. And now we're going to look at how OCD develops and we're going to link it to anxiety. But before we begin, um, let me introduce to you the second country um, in the free podcast uh, countries. So if you, if you didn't watch the first part and didn't watch the intro to this podcast or listen to it rather, yeah, um, I am offering one free therapy session uh, to one person from every country in the world as part of my therapy world tour. Yeah? And every week I introduce three countries which I'm offering it to. Uh, and the first person to send me a direct message um, from these countries that I um, mention in the podcasts will get one free therapy session. Yeah? Um, and they can contact me uh, in uh, Werapi's, through Werapi's uh, Instagram account at Werapi underscore ENG or my personal uh, uh, Instagram account at Werapi Phil or through Facebook. And that's also Werapi and Philip Anderson. Yeah? So just search for me there and get in contact with me. And the second country is New Caledonia. So if you're from New Caledonia and you want a free therapy session, get over to Instagram and get in contact with me. So without further ado, how does anxiety or rather how does OCD develop as a result of anxiety? And I think the anxiety aspect of OCD is overlooked because we have an anxiety within us that we're trying to control compulsively, see, uh, and we have an obsession over O. Oh. Um, so we do something in order to stop the anxiety from developing because we're quite afraid of having that anxiety. And for those of you who have followed me quite a, a long time, you would have seen uh, my graphs about anxiety. Um, and so this might be a little bit of a repetition for you guys, but I think it's quite quite an interesting way to think of OCD. Yeah. So we have, I'm gonna, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you will be able to see this, but I have two axes, one vertical, which is uh, anxiety, and then one horizontal, which is time. Here you'll see it. And when we get, or when we have an anxiety attack, or when we start feeling anxious, we feel like the anxiety is going up, you know, obviously. And it's going up at a quite a quick pace. And when we're in this state, we think that the anxiety will just keep on going up in the same, uh, at the same pace yeah, and intensity. So we just imagine that it will go up like this and that something crazy will happen up here. We'll get a heart attack or, or we'll just have a complete meltdown. Yeah. And, and no one has ever died of anxiety. Yeah. Um, it might feel as if you're going to, um, and uh, a lot of people feel, a lot of people mistake um, panic attacks for heart attacks and the like, but this is just an illusion. Yeah. But before we get to this point, yeah, when we're thinking about how it develops, we, we do something here. So for some of us, it's kind of we... Smoke a cigarette, we drink alcohol, we do drugs, we turn on the TV, we, um, we call um, our parents or we call a loved one, um, we go out running, we go training, um, anything. Yeah. Um, and for people who have an obsessive compulsive disorder or develop that, then they have very kind of 
small things that they do. Yeah. And once we do this thing, we feel like the anxiety goes down straight away. And this tells us that, well, this thing actually worked. Yeah. And then the next time anxiety comes back, it comes back even kind of sharper, quicker, uh, more intense pace. Yeah? And then we do this thing again, and then it goes down again. Yeah? And then the next time it comes back, it happens again and again and again until we're here. Yeah? And this is where OCD lives. Yeah. We do the thing. We do that control. We we yeah. I call it a control mechanism. Yeah. It's um, a kind of long word, so I don't really like it uh, so much. But we we do that control mechanism yeah, or um, controlling action. Yeah? Um, before the anxiety develops yeah so we do it we think that okay well if if this glass isn't standing exactly here then i'm going to get anxiety so i'm going to put it exactly here if i don't wash my hands then i'm going to get anxiety and this is linked back to a time much much earlier when maybe someone got sick by not washing their hands yeah and that person remembers that so now they they wash their hands before the anxiety actually kicks in yeah? it may have started this way yeah it may have started that they kind of felt an anxiety and then they wash their hands and then they uh, felt better after that and then they got anxiety again it got up a little bit it was a little bit more intense they washed their hands and it went down again. And it just developed and developed and developed until they were washing their hands for maybe half an hour until their hands were red before the anxiety actually even comes. Yeah, They're expecting the anxiety to come and that's where it becomes obsessive. Yeah. So I think this is quite a good way of thinking of um, OCD, yeah. Um, I hope that my explanation was clear enough for those of you who are not watching on my YouTube channel. Um, let me just repeat it yeah, for, for you guys. So anxiety goes in an upward trajectory. And we try to control it uh, by doing a certain action. That action uh, makes us feel less anxious but it affirms the anxiety it, it affirms the anxiety's control over us so the next time the anxiety comes back it becomes back more intense so we do that action earlier yeah? and this pattern continues until we do the action before the anxiety is even there yeah? um, and that's why we develop this obsessive compulsive control yeah over um all aspects of our lives yeah um and in many cases um i've uh, treated a lot of people who have had this yeah to a smaller degree yeah um it can develop and become really bad where they can't even <laughs> live properly yeah? i've actually never met somebody who's is to that degree but um washing their hands checking the lock um on the door um standing in the shower for several hours because they they want to be as clean as possible yeah and this is linked to an inner anxiety yeah um for some people um some people with autism can can kind of show the same symptoms without it being an obsessive compulsive uh, disorder yeah. but it's it can it there is a clear link in this case to anxiety so I think it's quite good to think of it in in this way yeah so in the next video I'm going to talk about ways in which we can treat this